me, Mario, Mario. I've been stuck in this pipe for a week. No food, no water, just mushrooms. All hope is gone. I have nothing left. Peach walked out. Luigi betrayed me. I had to eat Yoshi. It's just a slow crawl toward the sweet relief of death. Let's a go. Uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> oh, hey, Grab us. You missed it. You missed a, a hell of an intro. <laughs> Grab a slice of pizza and a handful of meatballs because we're about to join up with a pair of Italians who love to lay some pipe. My name is Juan here <laughs> with Mark and Kevin, and we like movies. Before we get into this, please remember to give us a review, a like, a follow, subscribe, and comment. If you like what you hear or want to give us any recommendations or, like or want to tell see. us how dumb you think our opinions are, <laughs> we want to hear about it. And it really helps us out as it is, it helps shoot us up rankings, lists, and all of that so that others can discover us. Also consider subscribing for just $2 a month. That's less than the cost of a caramel latte, which are Kevin's favorite, to get hours of additional content through special subscription-only episodes. Is that okay. incorrect? That's incorrect. Oh, we are reviewing the Super Mario Brothers. Let's go. The IMDb synopsis. You hear a lot of let's go. <laughs> that a Brooklyn plumber named Mario, which I added, his name is Mario Mario, travels through the Mushroom Kingdom with a princess named Peach and an anthropomorphic mushroom named Toad to find Mario's brother Luigi and to save the world from a ruthless fire-breathing breath Koopa named Bowser. The Super Mario Brothers is directed by Aaron Horvath, Michael Jelenic, and Pierre Leduc. It was written by Matthew Fogel. It stars Crisp Rat, Charlie Day, uh, Anaya Taylor-Joy, or Anya, Jack Black, Seth Rogen, Keegan Michael Key, Fred Armisen, and Sebastian Maniscalco. It was produced by Universal Pictures, Illumination, and Nintendo, and distributed by Universal Pictures. It was released on April 5th, 2023, has a runtime of 1 hour and 32 minutes, cost around $100 million to make, and has already made over 400 mil well actually at this point it's made uh like almost over 700 million worldwide so it's a massive success it currently sits at a well at the time i wrote this it was at a 57 percent critic score on rotten tomatoes Please but talk. a whopping 96 percent audience <laughs> score and in a display of writing ingenuity, language mastery, and brilliance, its tagline is, let's a go. <laughs> who wants to start? You've been hearing that a lot. I forgot whose pick was it. No one actually picked this. It oh, was a we, all, pick. we all did. Um, all right, I'll go real quick then. Um, it's always funny to me when you see such lopsided Rotten Tomato reviews between the critics and the audience. And usually when you see it so low with the critics and so high with the audience, this is going to be a good movie. Um, hmm. I, I really thought when I saw the unveiling of the cast, I really thought that Chris, Chris Pratt was going to ruin the movie. And he almost did. He almost did. But, uh, all in all, it, it he, did, he did all he could. Man, to try he, to ruin he, it, huh? he really tried. Um, but all in all, it was a, it, it was an enjoyable movie. Uh, there was there was a lot of funny moments, and um, I don't know. It was just nice to see uh, Bowser and, and his Koopa crew so menacing at the beginning of the movie. Um, I it was just it, you know kind of hit me in the nostalgia area 
a bit. So uh, yeah, all in all, it was it was a great movie. I, I really did enjoy it. Um, I could not disagree more, unfortunately, on this one. Um, for me, this was a huge disappointment. Um, I was very bored watching this. Um, and before, watch so a little backstory. So I have been following on Twitter, you know, there's this debate, right, where critics have kind of slammed this. Mm hmm um and then but a bunch of people that have gone to see it are just saying like you know critics are uh always uh you know just stuffy snobby miserable curmudgeons who right. can't find any joy in a happy children's movie so i was following this kind of curious and wondering like who's right mm -hmm. you know is it going to be the critics or is it going to be the people i wanted it to be the people because i have been um a huge mario fan since it first came out um it was really big for me as a kid so the combination of what the people were saying about it combined with um uh just how much money it was making and how well it was doing I was really excited for this and I went in with a lot of optimism. Um, Mark, I don't, I don't know if you, if you can understand the level of my, my fandom for Mario brothers, but if Mario had an only fans, I would be a subscriber. I, I did not um, know these. You had this in you. That's a, you and I actually dressed up as the Mario Brothers for Halloween one year. I, I understand that, but I also didn't think that you would be subscribing to my OnlyFans. <laughs> Did, yeah, that, that was a big moment for me, that, that Halloween. But anyway, so I, I wanted this movie to be good um, and to do well, and it was doing that. And so I was excited to go see it. Um, and again, unfortunately, uh, I do side with the critics on this one. I did feel like, I don't want to be so harsh, but I do feel like it was terrible. It was incredibly dull. Um, it really bothered me because I, I felt like it wasn't faithful to the source material or to the characters. Um, and eventually found myself trying to counter my negative feelings by telling myself that you know it was pretty innocent and wholesome but uh the more i thought about it um the more i really hated the way that they went um with this kind of underlying feminist agenda which i'll i'll get into some more and i'm not going to get into too much about like just the feminism stuff but more the effect that i felt that that approach had on the story and the characters um so and i because I, I felt like they redefined characters and the story and and really disconnected in some way um i know some a lot of people are going to certain sequences and throwbacks to the video games and they included all these things but i didn't feel that way i actually felt disconnected from my nostalgia and i felt like the only good thing in the movie was jack black as bowser um, even though it could have been much better, Kevin. I I will I will begin with saying I am extremely disappointed in Juan's review. Like, like I cannot be polar. That was loaded. I thought there was one thing that I thought was so egregious in this movie, which we'll talk about later. Um, I didn't mind uh, Chris Pratt. Um, I didn't mind the the slight redefining of characters because you know. I'm not here to watch a 1985 video game being played out as long as it was entertaining. And to me, I can agree that for a part, I was a little bored because I was like, oh, it's just everything coming so easy. But then when they got in trouble on the Rainbow Road and they, I'm like, okay, at least they're giving them something to overcome because everything was so easy until then. I liked it. I like, I have no problem with it. My kids loved it. I, I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was funny for the most part. I, I liked the way they played on some stuff like, the accents and the commercial and everything. Like I said, Jack Black was great. And uh, my one quibble, which was more than a quibble, was Seth Rogen, I hope never to hear him do a voiceover in anything in the history of this world again, because he is a definition of mailing it in. That dude didn't even try to change his voice. <laughs> he really Just like, did it. Hey, uh, 
<laughs> you really hey, just pay me some money. I'm just going to speak. I'm like, wait a real way. Yeah. <laughs> It was like him on his couch just doing a voiceover. <laughs> that every time he spoke, I was like, oh. I I will agree when he spoke, I will agree with Juan's review that the movie sucked for that portion. But the rest of it I thought was great. Hey man, maybe he, he did record this over COVID and, and <laughs> was in his house. He wasn't the only one, and he was not the worst one. Fred Armisen as Cranky Kong was horrible. Horrible. It just sounded like Should himself. Not- should yeah, it was like himself doing a bad impression of something it's but, for such a talented guy bro it was one of the worst accents one of the worst vocal it wasn't believable at all so many voices so many of the koopas they I, like, I, the I, voices I, didn't even fit the 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 animated character i'll give at least fred attempted to do something like seth attempted nothing like he just spoke he was terrible at one point he was on the cart just going (laughs) (laughs) and like that's all he was getting paid for that's what he was there to do it was horrible it didn't start off so bad i really i love the commercial at the beginning (laughs) then when it went into the family dynamics and now we're seeing like who these characters were i like the little joke with you know the gloves come off and it and it was just something that they were doing for the commercial same as the accents it, it it started off really good, but then then it, it quickly got derailed by probably as soon as they went into the Mushroom Kingdom and encountered uh, Princess Peach, and and even as it unfolds, right? The biggest thing, I don't know about you, again. I guess it didn't bother you guys, but Mario was a loser in this movie. He was just a massive loser, bro. Like, he couldn't do anything right. And that's not the picture that I have in my head of Mario. Like, Mario is the man, all right? And so uh, I hate it that they had to, like, knock him down so many pegs and make him, like, this loser throughout the movie. But, But that's the hero's journey. He had to grow into being that hero. Yeah. You know why it didn't bother me? Because they started off in the real world. Um, and we saw Mario and Luigi, you know, existing in this world where they're trying to, you know, start this plumbing business and then they get pushed into this magical world and they don't have powers and, you know, they can't really run or jump or do anything fast. Um, so for me, that didn't really bother me. Like it just, it was like, oh, okay. I mean, they really can't do anything special. And going off what you said, that's not what I knew about Mario. I mean, when I was introduced to Mario, it was, you know, Super Mario Brothers, the, the first game on Nintendo. And, uh, I mean, there really wasn't much story there. <laughs> there really wasn't much about Mario that uh, made me think that he was a big tough guy because as soon as as soon as he had no mushroom i'm like fearful for this dude like yo my his life is i'm in my hands now you know um which for me you know i kept laughing when he was doing the montage of the uh course with the mushroom i'm like screaming why doesn't he just have the mushroom the whole time like why is he still going through this movie with no mushroom (laughs) Like this boy, this boy's running around, small Mario. No wonder he can't do anything right. Yeah, I have no no issue with that trait. I mean, obviously that was funny. It was a lot of people. It resonated with a lot of people. They connected right. That is the experience of playing the game and learning how to do a skill after repeated tries. Yeah. But why was Peach? training him to do it right and again in that choice to have you know peach have the role that she had it ruined bowser it even ruined donkey kong it ruined mario because mario's whole objective is always to rescue the princess bowser wants to wants domination right and he's just using the princess as leverage to 
you know, to continue defeating uh, or evading Mario or, or, you know, presenting him with challenges. It should have been so much different, bro. It should have been like she did get kidnapped or something. Maybe Donkey Kong had her first. Maybe Donkey Kong and, and Bowser are working together, right? And then Mario, maybe with Toad, is Oh, like boy, learning. man. Oh, man. This, this, is, this is a terrible image in my head. Got Donkey no, Kong not, with Peach just passing no, him on. <laughs> Yeah, just, Bowser. You got Toad in the back saying, don't forget about me, guys. Oh, boy. But that that's what it was. It was like there's the elements for a great story that also aligns with the earliest things that we know about this. these characters could have been done in, in, in a much more interesting and compelling and dramatic story than what they gave us. Now, where I do make the distinct – where I – the way I had to justify this in my head was, okay, it, it is a children's movie. It, it really is. That is really <laughs> what they went for. It's a children's movie. That. It's got childish humor. You know, I went into it first expecting because now we've become so accustomed to these animated movies with adult humor. So I was expecting that. That never – I think there was maybe a couple times. And, like, that's okay. It's just I had to rewire my brain to be like, okay, I'm watching a children's movie. Children are going to enjoy this. If I was a child, I would be enjoying this. But as an adult, um, and more so as an adult who's actually a fan of this franchise, it, it lost me. And I felt like it was terrible. I I – I want to make this very clear. The only reason I saw this movie was because of this podcast. I had zero interest in watching it. Um, I would only watch it if my kids would want to watch it because I don't watch kid movies. Um, I don't. And I don't know. I, I, I always took this as a kid movie. Um, so I, I don't know. I guess me and you definitely walked into – the movie with the different mindset um, because I thought that they gave me just enough to chuckle. I didn't think there was going to be any adult humor uh, because it's Mario and Nintendo uh, and Nintendo really doesn't, they don't dance that line too much. Uh, they might get close to it. They won't really get that close, but anyways. Um, so I wasn't really expecting much of that. Uh, so it, it I, yeah, man, I just, the, it it almost sounded like you were you were expecting like the the Schindler's list of of video game movies, bro. Because I mean, this is it, Mario has always been about saving Peach, right? And then as the the games have evolved, it's not really saving Peach anymore. Now Peach is helping. Um, so, I mean, the fact she, at the end of the day, she still needed his help. I mean, I think that she made him go through the course to see if he's like Neo, if he's the one that can help, you know, because why, why bother, you know, accepting your, your help if, if, if you're in the, you know, just going to end up being a, a, in the way, you know, so for her to see that he can almost complete the course was good enough. Like, okay, this guy could do something. So I don't know. I feel like at the end of the day, she still needed his help. She wasn't a damsel in distress because she was about to be. I mean, Bowser was on his way. He hadn't kidnapped her yet. Um, so, yeah, man, I, you, you were like, you were, you were ready for an Os Oscar worthy movie, bro. Uh, and I, I don't know, man. For me, I, I wasn't expecting anything that you were looking for. No, I, I mean, I'm expecting stuff that makes sense. I'm, I'm expecting a good, a good story. So let's go back to that that it was sequence bad. where he's run. Yeah, it uh, was. Let's go back to quick, the um, this was an Oscar worthy movie because Jack Black may be nominated for best song. No, because it, it was okay. The song is the song is good, but that wasn't even the full version. That was just like one chord, one one verse, and the chorus. There's well, the more to it. Yeah. But back to that chorus, that 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 sequence, right? Again, it made no sense. Mario has just arrived in the Mushroom Kingdom. He runs into, you know, he's encountered Peach. The, one of the first interactions they have, he goes, I'm here. I need to find my brother. He ended up somewhere else. She's like, oh, he's um, in the dark place or whatever with Bowser. We don't have a lot of time. 
oh, okay, let's get to it then. First, though, can you run this course that's going to take you like 24 hours? It's a huge deviation. We don't have time to Come do on, this, man. but let's do it anyway. Come on, it's going to be really funny. <laughs> no, like that's stupid. That's stupid at any age. In the Mushroom yeah, Kingdom, it... there's no concept of time because Mario can have 5,000 lives. So, But these... But, and but you can't, you can't, and by the way, you can't say it's stupid at any age because I can bring down five girls. I didn't think that was stupid. No, for sure, it's entertaining, but it just doesn't make it takes away from the the drama of the story. Like, you just told me that you're in a rush, that there's a, a huge sense of urgency as soon as you spend all this time on just doing this silly course and not really taking it seriously and not displaying any sense of urgency, then it, it immediately removes from me any legitimacy about this story, which is what I need to be compelled into, you know, some, some type of, you know, what, what's going to happen and cliffhangers and where are they going and, and any of that. It's just like, bro, Bowser was six months away, man. They had three months to do the course. It was all fine. Everything worked out great. Yeah, yeah. So you, so you wanted like, Mario just to win that Bowser and get killed in the beginning. Because that's what would have happened. No, I he mean, wanted that, Mario to get the mushroom and then just go in. Which is what he should have done from the beginning. There there could have been many, many yeah. other ways so that, they, that they could have done it and, and just made a better story. Um, this is... I mean, they're they're making a lot of money, but it's 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 no surprise that people were saying were saying you know that they wanted to watch the the 1993 version again, you know that that had to have been better than than what this presented. Bro, I've never finished a Mario game on any system, on any system. I've never finished a Mario game and sat back and went, man, that was an amazing story. <laughs> And this guy saying a Mario movie didn't have the story that just it didn't it didn't it didn't cut it. <laughs> Yo, that that's just I don't know, man. I really I I want to know. I want to take a step into your head and see the Mario movie you were expecting, bro. Cause like I don't know, man. I feel like it would have been live action, bro. I, I feel like we would have had two real dudes up there. And 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 going through the I don't know, man. I I don't I don't. The story wasn't. I mean, it wasn't amazing, but it wasn't bad. But I feel like that's how all the Mario games have been. You know, all the games, the story is just like, yeah, whatever. It's another Mario game, and it's some form of him trying to help Peach and beating Bowser. So that's it, and that's what the movie was. So. I, I don't that's, know, man. That, that's okay for a video game because obviously there's a lot more elements involved in a video game where you're learning to play, where there still are surprises, where there are still hidden secrets. I mean, there's so many dynamics in a video game. With a movie, I'm just sitting there and you need to be engaging to me. You need to interest me. You need to include basic cinematic elements that make for a compelling story. That's not a lot to ask for. Uh, just, just, just the most basic thing and, and just things to kind of make sense. Um, there's a critic, Brian Tallarico, um, wow. who wrote for the, uh, um, Roger Ebert website. I mean, he, I love what he said because it make it, it's exactly what I saw. He said this felt like it was written by Chat GPT, and that's exactly how I felt, both from the story and from the dialogue, which was terrible. When you have Charlie Day, you have Keegan Michael Key, you have Fred Armisen, you have Seth Rogen, you have Chris Pratt, and all of their dialogue. It seems so boring and dull and uniform. Like it showed me that they were not given any ability to improvise or to do multiple takes to, you know, in, um, incorporate their, you know, their personality or even what they thought of the character. Like it was so cookie cutter and boring and basic. Keegan Michael Key is another one. He was terrible as Toad. Again, what? The voice. <laughs> The voice didn't even fit. Like it didn't even suit what the character. 
character. Oh my god! Was, I wish I could be in your brain, bro. I want to see this movie. <laughs> I thought he was great. <laughs> he didn't fit. I really thought. Yeah, I felt like he did the most outside of Jack Black. Okay. I would say he did the most because yeah. at the end of the day, uh, 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 what's his name, Luigi, uh, Charlie Day. He Charlie Day. He sounded like himself. He sounded just like himself. So he wasn't he was so as great, he wasn't me. as manic, but I mean, I think I st- I, I I would say that he was better than than most of the other cast. That's why I'm just confused. Go, go ahead and and say one one piece of dialogue that was memorable that that you laughed so hard that that made you crack up from I, Toad from Keegan Michael Key. I can't tell you any dialogue that made me crack up from anybody outside of yeah, Bowser yeah. singing Peaches. I mean, outside of that, I mean, there was moments that made me chuckle, but I wasn't slapping my knee like going, man, this is the funniest movie ever. But I, I, nothing about this movie was, was, was memorable to quote. It's a kid's movie, man. Like, I'm not going to spend my life. But, 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 okay. So what is a kid's movie? So was Toy Story a kids movie? Was The Incredibles a kids movie? Was Monsters Inc a kids movie? Was Finding Nemo a kids okay, movie? Okay, but that's was all. Was Lion King a kids movie? And all of those were amazing movies with incredible stories. So, so why can't why? Is I it guess so much to ask I mean to, to they're all say, but they're all cookie cutter stories. They just have emotion. So you 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 just want emotion? Is that what it was? You're lacking the emotion that Pixar movies have. Had. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. That's that's a good correction. That's true. They they weren't cookie cutter stories. They were that they, they're based off of um, narratives and and other pre other previous work and other previous elements um, and and archetypes. Um, and that's again, that's a lot of what's missing from from a lot of these movies now is that they are very much more ambiguous. They're not always folk clear cut about the conflict and again just just basic uh dramatic story elements which which need to be present no matter if it's a comedy no matter if it's a kids movie no matter if it's a musical whatever the case may be if it's not a compelling story if it's just uh, uh, a boring story that's just going from point a to point b with just some you know jokes thrown in like it, it's just right. boring and that's but just you what keep I saying, this movie was dull no it's not it may not be a compelling story to like a 35 year old 38 year old or 44 year old but as a child a, a, a child story again i could pull down a 13 year old 11 year old a nine year old an eight year old and a six year old who were very compelled by the movie you okay know what but, mean? The, but, 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 but no, you don't no, have no, to no, settle no 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 no, and, no, 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 no. Movies no, previously no, no. didn't. Oh, no, I let you speak. And also, speak. it won't be memorable. Let, they I, won't I, go I back speak. and watch this when I they're in speak. their thirties. They really? They, they, first of all, they, they asked me to if I could pay to go see it again, and I said no because I didn't pay the first time, so I wasn't going to pay this time, saving my money. But but they want to see it again. They want me to buy it when it comes out. Like everything you're saying is fine from your mind as a 38 year old, but for you you to superimpose that 38 year old onto kids, you know what I mean? That's not fair. You know what I mean? It's not fair. What do you mean? It's not fair. Who who are we reviewing for right now? No, 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 no. no. You you can say your opinion, but you're superimposing your opinion that it's not even it's not even good for children. You know what I mean? It's not even compelling to them. You can't say that because again, kids are compelling. I I didn't say it wasn't compelling for children. I said I didn't find it compelling. Actually, if you go back, I said that it's a fine enough children's movie. I wish no. You said it's not even compelling story. It doesn't even have the elements for a kid. No, I understand why a kid would like it. And why no, it would and, be and, appealing to a kid. And like I said, and to them, it's great. To them, it's good. Like, you may not like it. I liked it. Mark liked it. My brother liked it. My, you know, everyone I know who's seen it has liked it. You know what I mean? Except except the uh, half the critics, apparently. And you. You know what I mean? And then no one's ever said it's the greatest. It's not the second coming of the first Shrek. It's not any of that stuff. It's not Toy Story. It's not but better than, than any of those movies that you mentioned. Yeah, it's not. And no one's saying it. But those are so great. Not being as good as those doesn't. Saying that this isn't as good as the first Iron Man doesn't make this a bad movie either. It is a bad movie. (laughs) It's not. (laughs) So not. It it definitely is. Well, I will say uh, Illumination Studio is is becoming the, uh, the, the top notch 
when it comes to like digital animation because this whole movie looked great i mean it, it looked phenomenal um and i know that all the um all the despicable me movies have always looked good um they just did another one that came out that looked uh really good but they're 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 starting to like perfect their craft um they're putting out pretty good movies even story wise story wise like the 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 meat and potatoes that you're looking for have been from other movies have been in other movies by um illumination so maybe if this was not your cup of tea check out their other stuff oh i mean illumination's fine i mean i enjoyed uh the last movie i saw by them was the grinch which i thought was really great mm. the benedict cumberbatch one yeah i mean i'll give you another example they chose to use the song holding out for a hero and it wasn't even the original version it was the bonnie Raitt version and as soon as i heard as soon as it started playing all i could think about was shrek so it, it they even use something from another more much famous and much better animated movie and just regurgitate it into this one why not do something more original hey man that's not good that's they, not gonna they saw something that wasn't broke and they didn't try and fix it. Slight correction is from Shrek Two. <laughs> That's fine. But they saw they great, saw great a, input. They saw a three foot rim and they did a three sixty windmill dunk on it, bro. No matter how high it was, <laughs> they still dunked it though. Did you see the end credit scene? Yes. Yes. The egg? R yeah. Yeah. Spoiler. Well, that, <laughs> I mean, you know there's going to be a se sequel, and apparently Yoshi's going to have a bigger role. But before that, I mean, that was one of my quibbles was that he should have been in it and had a bigger role. He shouldn't have just been a, 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 a herd of yeah. little dinosaurs running by in the distance. Yeah. That's why I didn't really care for the like the egg breaking because I had already seen that there was a herd of them. So I guess the shock I guess they could have saved that for that reveal at the end with the egg. Like, Oh, we didn't see any of, are they just called Yoshi's Yoshi's right? Yeah. Um, we didn't see any, if we didn't see any running around that reveal at the end probably would have had a little more, um, gusto behind it, I guess. But, yeah, it, when it happened, I was just like, oh, okay. But th that's kind of how it was for the whole movie. It was just kind of like, oh, okay. You know, there was nothing that made me go, what? This is happening in Mario 2? No, there, yeah, that, didn't, that didn't happen. But, uh, yeah, I, I did see it. There was another one, right? Or was it just more of Bowser it was a, singing, right? The, the mid credits was Bowser. Mm. I yeah. I didn't see any of them. I just heard about it. Yeah, Jack Black uh, as Bowser, obviously, uh, you'll be hearing about that for a while. Because, I mean, he was the most enjoyable part of the movie. Um, man, that that song, I just... Was anybody else singing it like three or four days afterwards? I was just... Well, the chorus slaps, man. Yeah, man. Peaches, it was... Uh... Peaches, 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 peaches. You guys were still singing it. Ah! <laughs> Love yeah. you. <laughs> I'm glad it was in in the movie. I just would have liked to have heard the whole thing. Um, you know, when when he was uh imprisoned, hanging in that little cell. I mean, everyone seemed to have gotten a kick out of that. Lu Lumily, I think, is his name. Yeah, oh, the, the, little, yeah. the little blue the flame. No hope. Yeah. Um, the he uh, he was he was funny, but it kind of got a little overhyped. So I was expecting a lot out of it when he did come on screen. Yeah. And it was good. I mean, that was actually a bit of like adult humor. Yeah. But um, it's a little dark. But yeah, it did, it didn't quite land as, as much as I thought it was going to for right. me. Another oh, okay uh, moment. <laughs> it happened. I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and bro, I don't know if it was my theater, but I. I heard the sound mix on this bad. Um, like there were times and even transitions were like really weird. Like they would talk 
and then silence and then they would just be walking and then it would cut to like the next scene like really weird transitions and cuts and little little seconds that were just like it, it i don't know i it just didn't I think at that point you were just so deep in your hate you were looking for just anything to nitpick about. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I mean, it's not like I went into it hating it. It was just uh, it was after that I commercial. Ta taking note of things. No, I mean I, no, like you said through, when they got I, to Magic I'm Kingdom, not... Magic Kingdom, Mushroom, Mushroom Kingdom. Kingdom. <laughs> um, no, artist, damn it. But, I mean when. When it's halfway through and you're just like I'm bored to tears, I mean, what are you what are you gonna do? <laughs> well, I didn't notice any of that, um, but I wasn't drowning in my tears like you were. So I will. I feel like at some point in my life I'm gonna end up watching this again. Um, so I'll make sure I look out for that next time I watch it. I don't know. I could have. I mean, I've been to this theater several times now, and yeah. I haven't heard anything bad so i i was surprised hey man um, you never know you never know it well, also it will also i mean that also just illustrates how quiet it was in the theater like you're picking up on sound mixing things inst uh, instead of people laughing right, and having a, a great time uh, hoot and holler <laughs> why weren't you why weren't you high-fiving your next door neighbor you weren't compelled enough to bud Kids weren't dancing in the aisles for you? No. <laughs> no, that would be weird. Can you sit and watch the movie? <laughs> you guy. Oh, man. Well, so, uh, I mean, home. was there anything what? else that you, that you, do? well, I guess, was there anything you liked? Minus Jack Black, I guess. No, like I said, it was Jack Black. It was the beginning. I liked the commercial. Again, it, it, so even in that part, right after they do the commercial, they get called to a job and it's to fix someone's sink in their bathroom. Right. Like at least they, they show like, bro, that's a normal, that is a normal movie trope. That's a normal movie trope. Don't yeah, say Mar Mario would, Mario would have solved that somehow. He man. had no like, mushrooms, bro. <laughs> you didn't have mushrooms in the real world, bro. Okay, but so in that what, was in the real world. In what context? In what? Why were they what? so dumb? Why was Luigi so dumb? Why couldn't they? Luigi's just go, always been, but he we need to okay. Do something. Luigi's always been pegged as like the dumb brother. Always. That's how it's always been. I mean, look at his freaking face on the cover right. of Luigi Mansion. He looks terrified to be there. Like, which I thought was amazing that they, when they split, they put him in the haunted woods. I'm like, ah, oh, that's such, that was such a great, like, decision. I, I, I really enjoyed that. But anyways, um, I, Luigi's always been pegged that way. But Mario's always been pegged as the one that, like, saves the day, which is what he did at the end of the day. I don't know where it's ever been shown that he was an amazing plumber. I just know that he was a plumber. But like, you're you're talking about <laughs> something that's but like it, because there's it, no because context, it, again, so it, and it's giving us context. And you're sitting here going, no, 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 no. That's not I had. Uh, that's not how I pictured this. The same. I'm and, talking about the things that make for and 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 in basic dramatic elements right so if you show okay so he is good but maybe he just has bad luck maybe his brother keeps getting in the way because his brother's really afraid but but, but Mario actually was. has has some talent he's just undiscovered or whatever like he and, and and show him actually something going right at the beginning um that could have been a great opportunity to do that but that that's not the way that they that they went with it and so i do it, do we not recall a cat attacking someone and then that someone starting this whole commotion after mario fixed the issue mm -hmm. okay it a, so oh, it was an outside it force was a dog, yeah. oh my bad dog uh it was an it's been a while it's it was an outside force that attacked luigi who has always been pegged to be the weaker of the two and he's the one that kind of started this whole commotion See what I'm saying? Um, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so like, 
<laughs> it's like it's the but this is you're telling me that uh, I guess I mean if that wasn't just a normal movie TV sitcom, like if that just wasn't a normal thing in Hollywood, I would be mad at it. But it's just so normal that I mean I at this point I expect it now. So when we saw that happening, it was just like, oh, yeah, okay. I mean, he's not a good plumber. Like, I've never known him to be a good plumber, so none of this really matters. He's going to go and save the day. Like, that's what I know him to be. Uh, <laughs> so, well, it was bro, I it was wish confusing. I was watching this movie with you, man, because I would have looked over okay, at you and well, be like this. Maybe next time, next time you should. But it was what is happening? What is happening? Martin. He's an amazing plumber. What is happening? It, it would have been like that um that Nick Cage meme. You would have looked over happy and he would have like... it, it it didn't seem like he was that happy. I mean he's defending it to the death, but he said it was it was pretty it was, boring. It was okay. No, I didn't say it was boring. It was okay. But it's confusing. I myself. Right? Because you don't know whether where they're coming at with the character, right? Is it is it for with someone Mario? Who, has a, yeah so has an expectation right so now they're 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 changing it and you it's just hard to follow exactly like who this version of the character that they're presenting is and it's it's throwing me off because it's inconsistent so now it's it's harder for me necessarily to follow because <laughs> of the way that they change things you know, about it so the best thing you know for why? me actually you would, why, would have been if it, I if I went in with no expectation, no, because I'm not done with my with my thought. The <laughs> the best thing that. for me would have been if I went in as with a blank slate, mm -hmm. with having no expectation and uh, an erased memory, with no previous knowledge of what this was at all, and just accepted whatever they gave me as it came. Then I probably would have been more satisfied with the story. So you're so good at Mario, right? Like you're so good at it. And like, no, wait, that. wait, I just let me, I, no, I let you finish, last... you let me finish. Okay. So you're really good at it. Right. So like, no, you're, you're making a let false me, assumption about, it. let me, let me finish. No, I'm not. So but are you with you, hypothetical? with you? No, I'm assuming this is what, how you have. What, what do you mean? I'm so Let's good at out. Mario. I, I'm trying, trying to finish. <laughs> What am I trying to say? If you would yeah, let me no, get by know. one sense, but you you're starting off say. with a false press proposition. You don't know. You don't know Maybe he's making Oh my gosh. Play. Okay. You can play Mario well enough that you can complete the game. Is that better? Because I thought good would be enough, but. <laughs> What are you? I, okay, so okay. Lost. So you are someone who can complete the mm -hmm. Mario game. So it's it's mm -hmm. not hard, right? Okay. So it is hard. Ma oh. Mario, in your head, is being controlled by you, right? So since you're controlling, <laughs> in my head, it, well, no, what, am I crazy no, you're really controlling happy? him in the video game. You're controlling yeah. him. So you have yeah. Mario doing all these amazing things. And then all of a sudden, you're looking at this guy that goes lefty, loosey, righty, tighty right before he finishes a plumbing job. So you're just looking like that's not the Mario I know. Because the Mario I know. And then you're thinking about all the times that you controlled Mario. So now that you're looking at a Mario that's outside of your actions, it's not up to the par of the Mario that you're used to. To some it's degree, me, although I, I, I mean, I, th I think at that point it, it hadn't that that thought hadn't registered yet. But it it was the it was the you know a, a breadcrumb which kind of culminated with that training session. Bro, that ain't a, that, that wasn't a breadcrumb, man. That you walked in with a whole loaf of bread, like because that's how you grew up with Mario. Like you're like, man, this guy's amazing. He could do everything. And then you sat down, and in your first instance, you're throwing your hands up, going, "What am I? What am I watching here, people?" And it was just Again, downhill from there. Early on, but not right away. Like you're I not said, used was, to Mario was, fumbling, stumbling. Of course, I was giving it a chance because I have no idea what they're gonna put in front of me, right? So I again, I liked. You the gave way it that a chance, but that's what I said. The, I, once it started, even 
even with with the chase that they went on, which actually um, was uh, portrayed like a 2D version of the game, you know, as you're following them along, all that was great. All that was great. Um, so I was oh, I was so still like excited. Some... What still? Um, I mean, again, the commercial made me laugh. It had some laughs in it. There were some good things in there. The dynamic with the family in the dining table scene, I, I was not crazy about it. Like, I was like, who are these people? Who are these characters? They And they sound weird. Like, again, at that point, it started losing me because it took things that I was familiar with, right? And it dropped me in the middle of, of now new things. And again, if those things would have worked, then that's okay. But for me, it was like, all right, I'm already discombobulated, right? Mm. Because you're taking Making something that I know and, I get it. and you're painting it in different colors. But now I don't like the result. And so right. yeah, at that point, you, you start to check out. So it's a combination of those things. You know, it's not just because you can reimagine, you can re-envision, you can do something new, um, but it still has to be good and effective and, and work. And what I'm saying is that for me in this it didn't. Well, yes, and I know you're saying that, but I just want to make it known that you're having that I can beat that I can beat the Mario games. Yeah, <laughs> that you went into this with a lot of baggage. This was this was a lot for you. Yeah, you know. No, I so said he, that right off the bat. So he, here's the thing: like for me, like I'll never watch the Halo shows because I know how bad they are, and yeah. I don't want to watch them because. I don't want Halo to be ruined for me. And I feel like Mario was ruined in the same way because you're like, this ain't it, man. This ain't it. So it's just, it's tough that you had so much going into this movie and that you were let down. Because me and Kevin look at each other going, I mean, I, I have fun, you know. And uh, meanwhile, you're like picking up sand going, what happened? What What happened to what i had here yeah but i mean you can't that, that's gonna again for me it was i mean i have uh some some significant memories of like getting a nintendo um being excited to play mario and then actually yeah, my my family ended up like take you know ended up playing it more than i did at first and we were like solving the the levels together and i was oh, always course, the one bro. that would like check every nook and cranny so i was always the one that would find the hidden things and so there's a lot of nostalgia like it was a big part of me for my childhood it's the same thing with ninja turtles yeah. right so there's always going to be a draw for me and this time for me the draw was man obviously they didn't do it right the first time around I have a lot of doubts, oh, man, but then I'm good. hearing all these things from people like, oh my goodness, it's so great. Critics are idiots. This is a fantastic, such a fun movie. So yeah, that's what was swelling and swelling and swelling up for me. This expectation of like, dude, Mario, I am a Chris Pratt fan. I know you are really annoyed that he got cast in it, that he wasn't going to have the voice. I was like, it's fine. It's still going to be awesome. Just an I'm going to go in and 10 to 15 minutes later, longer than that, but I'm at definitely halfway through when I, when I was able to just be like, man, it's not funny. I'm not laughing, you know, and, and, and I'm not, I'm so bored um that at that point it was just like oh man it's a dud and so I, I i didn't go in wanting to hate it i went with expectations like i'm so pumped for this and i want this to do well and no i know that's what i said and, it, and, and you were you were let yeah. down immensely that's why i'm looking at kevin going man oh, it was okay um yeah and i bro. mean that's always gonna again same thing for the ninja turtles movie that's coming out you know yeah. again um, and there's a few, that there's does a few things good. like that for me. <laughs> yeah. Man, uh, but I'll never forget the moment, like, getting a new console as a kid. And, like, you just feel like a god because everyone wants to hang out with you. Everybody wants to play that console you got. And that's why you let everybody play. You just stand in the back. You got your arms folded. You're like, yes, this is my life. <laughs> Not me, bro. I got it, like, a year after everybody else. <laughs> That's when I was getting my brand new console. It was like hey, it doesn't matter, man, because else. you were probably hanging out with people that didn't have one either, right? So you were the first to get it out of them. That's how it was. Nah, 
they all had when I was the last. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Never oh. mind. You got that sweet 64 that was see through green. Yeah, the Donkey Kong. Yeah, that was cool. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've always been a Nintendo Nintendo guy. Yeah. What's that? And, and I think, like like you, I've played, I played it since the first game came out, like, what, 1986? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I've played it on Super Nintendo, i played it on GameCube, played played Paper Mario, played Mario RPG. Mario just Party, like when I into, Mario yeah, Kart. Everything. Tennis. But I guess when I went Mario through at the this, Olympics. Uh, Mario vs. Sonic. But um, when Mario I went into the movie, like, I get... Ooh. But, um... Dr. Mario? <laughs> Mario Golf, but um, I just left all that out the window. Like, again, I wasn't lost because it wasn't anything that I'm like, all right, just show me who Mario was. And to me, it wasn't confusing. He was this, he was a guy who was trying hard to succeed, and he he quit his job. He was trying hard to succeed, and they were failing. Um, he was failing more. He was people were looking at him like, what are you doing? You're not succeeding. And then he loses his brother. He wants to get his brother back. And it just builds up to him, you know what? Together we're better than we're not. And they end up winning the day at the end and actually overcoming in front of his family. So to me, the story they told was like that hero's journey of this hapless person who, again, he goes to the Mushroom Kingdom, doesn't know what he's doing, getting beat up. The princess is trying to show him how to do stuff, gets beat up at Kong. And then he just has to overcome it towards the end where him and his brother unite to beat Bowser. And like I said, it was it was simple. Like it was at one point, I thought the story was a little too simple until the Rainbow Road switched it up a bit. But again, the word for simple is dumb. No, simple can be simple. Simple Jack. Like there's movies that can be very simple and and enjoyable. Bowser's whole motivation as as a character, as the villain, Uh his whole motivation for doing anything was Uh just to be with Peach. Yep. Okay. That's any man that's, would do that's, that. That's yeah, what. That's, that's never what, been the case. Kings have and invaded that's, that's for far not, less. Like you, you like have an entire, too. you have an entire arm, oh, uh, an entire powerful army. <laughs> you, you know, could be made out to be just, uh, you know, there are people with evil or just with bad intentions in the world, right? Oh. We there are villains, there are enemies in. Every every story that's good. There's a good guy and there's a bad guy, and yeah. and the bad guy is motivated by by whatever. They took all of that potential motivated by his penis with, with Bowser, and <laughs> and they we said, oh okay, he's just doing love. all of this because he's so in love with Peach. So everything yeah. was about Peach in this. The he whole wants movie, to touch the, the whole boobies. world. Everything revolved around Peach in this. Like I would have been yes. okay. Just give you her the Mushroom Kingdom. Just give her her own movie. Just give her her. Barbie's got a movie coming out. Give Peach her own movie. This was about Peach, but Mario was in it. <laughs> well, the original Mario Brothers game is about Peach. You're just trying to rescue. Yeah, because they're trying to rescue Peach. I know. So mm-hmm. so instead of instead of Mario going after Peach, this is just Bowser going after Peach. They just flipped the story. Yeah, we saw we saw why they were in that castle together. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, I mean, I, I as much as much as much as we can go round and round, it doesn't sound like mm-hmm. we're we're breaking into to one there. No, 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 no. But that was uh, that was a different a different angle. You know, just, mm. just, again, they just ruined Bowser. Um, so many, it's so improved. many things. But yeah, I mean, if you guys have anything no, another else, word for ruin is improved. <laughs> why do you like? Why do you like to? Why do you like to stand off camera? Sit off. I'm not camera. off camera. On mine, I'm not off camera. It's because you have a small boxes. Open me up, and you'll see. I'm not off camera. Mark and I are right in the middle. Oh, I've got them wide you're, open. You're... Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing right here. I see myself right here. Uh, yeah, so like I, I'm, I, I can go into fun facts. Oh yeah, I don't know. Kevin, the music. Kevin's having a moment with himself right now. I'm looking off camera. Hold on. <laughs> I had to put on airplane mode. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, uh, how about them? How about those those Heat players? Going, heat uh, team. So we're gonna... This is not the Heat logo. This is a Mario Fireball. My bad. Oh, how about those so uh, Mario Fireballs? No, they Fireball. They'll be, out. they'll be out the first round. They deserve to be. You think? Uh, Ready way, here first. All right, fun fact number yeah, let, one. Let's just go. Oh, 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 trash oh, that boy. Woo! Fun fact for one. Fun Impeccable timing as usual. <laughs> yeah, I was about to cut Fun him out. fact number one. Uh, a game cabinet in the pizzeria early in the film is called Jumpman. The character of Mario was originally known as Jumpman when he first appeared in the video game Donkey Kong in 1981. Mm. That character's name was changed to Mario as a tribute to the landlord of Nintendo of America's warehouses, Mario Sigali. Uh, what a tribute. Ooh, fact number, fact number two. Me. A French restaurant called Chez du Canard can be seen in the background of some shots in Brooklyn. Shay the Cunard translates as Duck Hunt. Oh, oh, Another oh. early Nintendo game, which was often packaged with Super Mario Brothers, 1985. The restaurant's logo is a duck from the game. Oh, Fun fact number that. three. Wait, did y'all play Duck Hunt? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I recently found out if you plugged in the second controller, you can control the duck's movements. <laughs> yeah, man. You, a second person could be did, controlling the duck. Did you the way hate your sibling? I, I was I forced to that. share with my siblings. So you did you that, did. Mark? Yeah. Now you're off camera. Oh, my, well, I'm doing that on purpose. <laughs> so were you often the shooter or the duck? <laughs> oh, I was always the duck because they couldn't get me. They sucked. <laughs> my siblings. They'd go right up to the but, TV and go like, bang, and they yeah. would still miss. Mm -hmm. like, you trash. That's the worst. They would never right I was Barry them, Sanders right. out there, bro, with that duck. <laughs> so. Not the one. Uh, number four. This marks the first time in non-video game media where Princess Peach is referred to as such outside of Japan rather than as her original name, Princess Toadstool. Mm. Hmm. I forgot that is her name. And Princess. fun fact number five. Mom. Last but not least, this. Oh gosh, I copied the same one twice. <laughs> uh, never mind. That was the last one. one. So you better come up with one. So right now. nice. Had to do it twice. There were a lot. Uh, I'll I'll give you one right now. You guys probably saw this, but the video game that Mario was playing in his bedroom um, after the dinner scene was Kid Icarus. Yeah. Yes. Such a good there, game. There were a lot of uh, a lot of uh, Easter eggs throughout the film. There were. Can you name any of your favorites? Do you want to enlighten us? I'm trying to think. There was one when they first um, got to uh, the area with Don Kong. Um, man, when he was fighting, something happened there, and I was like, oh, that's an Easter egg. But now I don't remember. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I'm so he close. Have a I'm so have close. Have a something close. happened somewhere. That was an Easter egg. Fantastic. <laughs> I, I, I like the Jumpman one, but I was about It'll come to me, don't worry. Okay. Um, all right. Do you who wants to go first with their rating? Again, oh, I guess I should, a, I should go first, right? Yeah. yeah, we do a one to five little Jerry's rating. Uh, it's what we've been doing throughout season two. Season one, we only went one to three, but obviously we are a bigger and better and much improved podcast now. So we've expanded our rating <laughs> system from one to five. One being the worst, five being the best, and everything in between. All right, Mark, you're up. Let the music take my body there. I don't know. Um, 
Super Mario Brothers, the movie. It will be the Super Mario the Brothers. Super Mario Brothers movie. Will be the movie. The, the Super the... Mario Brothers, the movie. <laughs> this movie that we are reviewing, the Super Mario Brothers, the movie. Got it. I will give it four stars. It was enjoyable enough for me to uh, sit through it. And, um, I mean, there was there was moments that made me think back to my days playing with Mario. Um, and there was just some nice animation moments. There, I, there really isn't anything to call home about, but it was enjoyable. It, it, it really was. I, I didn't see anything wrong with it. It was... Um, you know, a quick uh, number one at McDonald's real quick. It's like, yeah, I know what I'm getting. And I'm still happy with that. So, yeah. So, four. Four stars for me. Four little Jerry's. Little oh, Jerry's. That's, that's high. That's disappointing. <laughs> Kevin, do you want me to go next or do you want to go next? Yeah, you can go next. We'll sandwich this. We'll do a sandwich. Make the uh, average. It's a better. one for me. <laughs> <laughs> Terribly disappointing. Um, I thought they did a good job uh, putting together a cast that had potential. Unfortunately, I feel oh like my. that cast was restrained to only the shoddy dialogue that was written for oh, them, so um, as well as so many things in the story just uh, not being executed well or, or thought through. It was very, very minimal effort to put this together in a way that would, would put it on par. I mean... I, I don't think that I'm being unreasonable here. It's Mario, okay? The reason that this movie has made so much money and will make more money is because it is a globally recognized brand for almost 40 years now, right? So it's not unreasonable to say, let's go for it. Let's try to make a movie that is on par with Toy Story, with The Incredibles. Let, let's do it. Um, of course, that's a whole different animation team. So, um, but as we uh, as we stated, Illumination has done good things. Um, but this was the wrong team. These writers, this director, get them out of there. Um, get get individuals in here that have done more, accomplished more, proven themselves more, can really um, do something with a really great story. Uh, but this was not it. Um, you know, even, again, there's element, I won't even get into it. But, yeah, uh, I'm sure kids enjoyed it and other people did too, but I did but not. Screw One em. out of five. <sighs> Man, was not expecting one. That's pretty good. That's what I, that's what I, mean. I wasn't either. But that's what my were you expecting? What, what, what did you realistically think it was going to oh, be? Oh, at least a two. Two, two yeah, and a half? At least a two. One. Jack Black? I mean, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I heard you and I listened. And it was, I respect your, your opinion, Juan. Unfortunately, my opinion, I have to go with Mark. I give it a four. Um, brought down for mostly because of Seth Rogen and yeah, mostly because Seth Rogen. I could not stand whenever he spoke. Um, I thought it was fun. I thought it was enjoyable. As my kids say, the Super Mario Bros. movie. Bros. They loved it. Um, That's acceptable. I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching with them. As a parent, I was also happy that any li there maybe there were a little bit of adult humor, but it wasn't much, and they just kept it out of there because. I didn't have to worry about my kids seeing anything inappropriate. Right. Um, again, they laughed. I laughed. Enjoyed. My mom enjoyed the movie. We just we all went to go see it, and we all had we all had a great time. And thank you, Ken, for taking my. Daughter. I got my quote for the cover. <laughs> <laughs> my mom was going to was like, uh, Thank you, Ken, for uh, taking the girls for their birthday to go see it. And uh, what he said, 
I, I would see this movie again. We'll, we'll probably get it when it comes out and we'll watch it here. So I give it a four. That's a four, one, four burger. Uno, dos, tres, four. All right. So to recap the Super Mario Brothers movie, the movie. that was one out, of, one out of five for me, four out of five <laughs> for Mark, for and four out of five. Five for Kevin. But if we do it in the way that it was first announced, it's four one four. Yeah. Uh, remember to check out the description of this episode for some bonus features, including uh, the movie trailer, uh, the Peaches music video. If you haven't seen that, the full song and the Jack Black music video um i also have a link there called uh, that i titled the mario we deserved um so check out that link and lastly i have a link there for the brian tallarico article of the review that i liked uh, as far as you guys um i'm happy to throw on any links up there that you give me um i don't want it to be biased so if there's a video that you saw or an article that you read i'm just gonna find that things that just want to shove in my all, everything that you're posting Go for it. I will. I will post it on there and let the people decide Please, if they want to waste their money on this. Go ahead. I don't say I didn't tell you. Um, that don't is, enjoy the movie, guys. Don't enjoy the movie. That is it uh, for us. Um, thank you for listening. As always, please uh, like us, subscribe, follow us, comment, rate us. All of that stuff makes a really big difference. If we put a smile on your face, hey, pay it forward. You know, show us some love. We really appreciate it. Um, as you can see, we uh, spare no expense in producing this podcast. Um, so um, subscribe and support us. Go to Buy Me a Coffee. We like movies, and you can donate. Uh, every cent that we receive will go right back into the production of this uh, podcast. Again, my, uh, my name is Juan here with mm. Mark and Kevin. And we like movies. Later, haters.